Thank you, President Kimball. A proclamation of the First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized 150 years ago today. On this sesquicentennial anniversary, we issue to the world a proclamation concerning its progress, its doctrine, its mission, and its message. On April 6, 1830, a small group assembled in the farmhouse of Peter Whitmer in Fayette Township in the state of New York. Six men participated in the formal organization procedures with Joseph Smith as their leader. From that modest beginning in a rural area, this work has grown consistently and broadly as men and women in many lands have embraced the doctrine and entered the waters of baptism. There are now almost four and a half million living members and the church is stronger and growing more rapidly than at any time in its history. Congregations of Latter-day Saints are found throughout North, Central, and South America, in the nations of Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in Australia and the islands of the South Pacific, and in other areas of the world. The gospel restored through the instrumentality of Joseph Smith is presently taught in 46 languages and in 81 nations. From that small beginning held in a farmhouse a century and a half ago, the church has grown until today it includes nearly 12,000 organized congregations. We testify that this restored gospel was introduced into the world by the marvelous appearance of God the Eternal Father and His Son, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. That most glorious manifestation marked the beginning of the fulfillment of the promise of Peter, who prophesied of the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. This in preparation for the coming of the Lord to reign personally upon the earth. We solemnly affirm that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is in fact a restoration of the Church established by the Son of God when in mortality He organized His work upon the earth, that it carries His sacred name, even the name of Jesus Christ, that it is built upon a foundation of apostles and prophets, he being the chief cornerstone, that its priesthood in both the Aaronic and Melchizedek orders was restored under the hands of those who held it anciently, John the Baptist in the case of the Aaronic and Peter, James, and John in the case of the Melchizedek. We declare that the Book of Mormon was brought forth by the gift and power of God, and that it stands beside the Bible as another witness of Jesus the Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of mankind. Together they testify of His divine Sonship. We give our witness that the doctrines and practices of the Church encompass salvation and exaltation, not only for those who are living, but also for the dead, and that in sacred temples built for this purpose, a great vicarious work is going forward in behalf of those who have died, so that all men and women of all generations may become the beneficiaries of the saving ordinances of the gospel of the Master. This great selfless labor is one of the distinguishing features of this restored Church of Jesus Christ. We affirm the sanctity of the family as a divine creation and declare that God, our eternal Father, will hold parents accountable to rear their children in light and truth, teaching them to pray and to walk uprightly before the Lord. 
We teach that the most sacred of all relationships, those family associations of husbands and wives and parents and children, may be continued eternally when marriage is solemnized under the authority of the holy priesthood, exercised in temples dedicated for these divinely authorized purposes. We bear witness that all men and women are sons and daughters of God, each accountable to Him, that our lives here on earth are part of an eternal plan, that death is not the end, but rather a transition from this to another sphere of purposeful activity made possible through the atonement of the Redeemer of the world and that we shall there have the opportunity of working and growing toward perfection. We testify that the spirit of prophecy and revelation is among us. We believe all that God has revealed, all that He does now reveal, and we believe that He will yet reveal many great and important things pertaining to the kingdom of God. The heavens are not sealed. God continues to speak to His children through a prophet, empowered to declare His word now as He did anciently. The mission of the church today, as it has been from the beginning, is to teach the gospel of Christ to all the world in obedience to the commandment given by the Savior prior to His ascension and repeated in modern revelation. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, acting in the authority which I have given you, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Through the prophet Joseph Smith, the Lord revealed these words of solemn warning, quote, Hearken, ye people from afar, and ye that are upon the islands of the sea, listen together. For verily the voice of the Lord is unto all men, and there is none to escape. And there is no eye that shall not see, neither ear that shall not hear, neither heart that shall not be penetrated. And the rebellious shall be pierced with much sorrow, for their iniquity shall be spoken upon the housetops, and their secret acts shall be revealed. And the voice of warning shall be unto all people by the mouths of my disciples, whom I have chosen in these last days. It is our obligation, therefore, to teach faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, to plead with the people of the earth for individual repentance, to administer the sacred ordinances of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins and the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost, all of this under the authority of the priesthood of God. It is our responsibility to espouse and follow an inspired program of instruction and activity and to build and maintain appropriate facilities for the accomplishment of this that all who will hear and accept may grow in understanding of doctrine and develop in principles of Christian service to their fellow men. As we stand today on the summit of 150 years of progress, we contemplate humbly and gratefully the sacrifices of those who have gone before us many of whom gave their lives in testimony of this truth. We are thankful for their faith, for their example, and for their mighty labors and willing consecrations for this cause, which they considered more precious than life itself. They have passed to us a remarkable heritage. We are resolved to build on that heritage for the blessing and benefit of those who follow, who will constitute ever-enlarging numbers of faithful men and women throughout the earth. This is God's work. It is His kingdom we are building. 
Anciently, the prophet Daniel spoke of it as a stone cut out of the mountain without hands, which was to roll forth to fill the whole earth. We invite the honest in heart everywhere to listen to the teachings of our missionaries who are sent forth as messengers of eternal truth, to study and learn and to ask God, our eternal Father, in the name of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, if these things are true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost ye may know the truth of all things. We call upon all men and women to forsake evil and turn to God to work together to build that brotherhood which must be recognized when we truly come to know that God is our Father and we are His children, and to worship Him and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind. In the authority of the holy priesthood in us vested, we bless the seekers of truth wherever they may be, and invoke the favor of the Almighty upon all men and nations whose God is the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.